You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, he covers the top 10 benefits to intermittent fasting. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, chiropractic physician, functional nutritionist, maximized living doctor, focusing on the true cause of disease, looking at the five essentials uh, of health and of maximized living, which are looking at your mindset, your spine and your nervous system, your nutrition, your exercise, and your toxicity. All five of these key areas work together to control your metabolism, to control your hormone balance, to control the way that you feel, to control your brain health, to control your inflammation, to control your weight, to control everything about your overall health and longevity. And it's all coordinated and controlled by that that one essential, the nervous system. But today what I want to talk about is I'm going to piggyback off the last episode, which was the top three tips for weight loss. And one of those tips, if you haven't heard the episode, one of those tips was a technique called intermittent fasting. Okay, so intermittent fasting is a a really neat concept right now in overall health. You know, I said it's about weight loss in the last episode, and that was the top three tips for weight loss. But it's really a, you know, a huge topic in athletics, in bodybuilding, in weight gain, in people who that's their goal. Because what it does is it actually changes your hormones and boosts your HGH levels, which is your human growth hormone is boosted by intermittent fasting. So fasting, as we know, is to, you know, starve yourself, to not eat for a while. So we've heard of, you know, Jesus fasting. We've heard of people doing a Daniel fast, or we may have heard of a juice fast or a juice cleanse. And so fasting is going hungry for a while, not eating for a little bit, right? So intermittent fasting is exactly like it sounds, fasting intermittently, okay? So what that means is you're, the minimum that you have to go is you have to go 16 hours, okay? So, so the way that we talked about in the last episode is called the 16-8 rule. That is you eat for eight hours, okay? So maybe you eat breakfast at 10 a.m., you eat lunch at 1 p.m., you eat dinner at 6 p.m., then you're done. So that's eight hours of the day from 10 to 6 is when you're eating, and then 16 hours, you're giving your body a break. Or you could skip breakfast altogether, etc. We're going to go through some of the ways that you can do this. But the, the bottom line is that 16 hours is the minimum to be effective. Okay, so I'm going to go through some of the examples of some of the other ways that you can do intermittent fasting. But then we'll go into, you know, why you would want to. And we're going to talk about the top 10 benefits of intermittent fasting because they go way beyond just, you know, weight loss and teaching your body how to burn fat and build muscle. They, they go into every aspect of your health. But here's some types of intermittent fasting, okay, because I was familiar with the 16 and 8 type, but I didn't know that there were many other types until, you know, patients sent this information over to me. And, you know, I mentioned this story in the last podcast episode, but what happened is, you know, this is a patient of ours who's had incredible health results, okay? She's come off of a double-digit number of medications. She's, you know, I I don't even know the rest of her her testimony off the top of my head, what she had, but she's come off of at least 10 medications. She's lost 15 to 20 pounds in the last year, but it's not what she was looking for from a weight loss perspective. Very, very happy with her health changes. She's one of our testimonials. Her handicap parking pass is actually turned in in our drug bin along with, you know, 10 of her medications. And one of her things that she said in her testimonial was that, you know, she used to feel like a zombie in her own life. And that's so many of our patients, and that's heartbreaking. But one of the things that she's not been happy with and that's plateaued is her weight loss, okay? And that's so many people out there that want to lose weight or want to be at a different weight. And so we talked about intermittent fasting, and she implemented it, and she lost seven pounds 
right away. Okay, so within the first week or 10 days, she had lost seven pounds. And she's like, wow, there might be something to this because she's already eating a really healthy diet. And that's the start. Okay, so intermittent fasting, what it is not, intermittent fasting is not starving yourself for a little bit and then binging. Okay, it's not starving yourself for a while and then eating, you know, junk food or crap food or, you know, drive through and, and eating, you know, a few Big Macs. You can have, we talked about, you know, you can have the same amount of calories. You can have the exact same amount of calories that you're used to, but just putting them into that eight hour window or a seven hour or a six hour or a four hour window still works, but it is not starving and then binging. But by doing this, by changing just the, the timing and the order of which she ate her meals, she started losing weight right away, okay? And so that's what's got me on this topic right now is this is something that a lot of people need to look into uh, and try if you're plateaued in your weight loss or even in your adrenal fatigue. We're going to talk about, I don't want to give away too many of the benefits because we're going to talk about that in a minute, the top 10 benefits of intermittent fasting. But wherever at, you're at in your health, if you feel like you've plateaued, this might be something that you want to take a look at. So a couple ways that you can do it, okay? So here's five ways that you can do it other than the 16 and 8 rule, which is the one that I'm going to talk about the most because that's the one that, you know, you read about a lot on, on like a site like Dr. Mercola. Dr. Mercola is very, very into intermittent fasting. That's the first place that I heard about it. And he talks about the 16 and 8 rule. But here's a couple other ways. You know, you can do an alternate day fasting. And that just means that you have a day of fasting and then the next day you have a day of eating to satisfaction. You know, it's going to be eating more than you usually do, right? But Because you're going to be more hungry. But you alternate every other day of eating. Now, I don't think that that's very healthy long term. I think that that is a period of starvation and then a period of binging and, and you know, can lead to that. Now, are there healthy ways to do it? Could you do that for a week? Could you do that for 10 days? Absolutely. And is it going to do things like kickstart your metabolism and kickstart your weight loss? Absolutely it will, but I don't think that that's a great long-term uh, method. Another one is the one day per week fasting. Now this one's okay, okay? And, the, and the, one of the reasons is because there's a, a book called Eat, Stop, Eat by Brad Pillion that's a, you know, really successful, a really popular book. And one of the things that he talks about is this one day per week fasting, okay? And so that's a, a little bit more of a healthier long-term way of eating because you're still eating your normal healthy diet the other six days of the week. There's ways that you can vary this too. You could put a 16 and 8 fasting in six days a week, and then you could do one day of complete fasting. Okay, You can mix and match these. There's another one called up to the ninth hour fasting. That's really similar to the 16 and 8. Up to the ninth hour means that you fast for the first eight waking hours of the day. So you wake up, say you wake up at 6 a.m., you don't eat until 2 then you eat it too. And then, you know, you want to keep that in, you know, you want to keep that for a, a sh few short hours. You know, you're not going to eat from two until 10 o'clock when you go back to bed at night, but you're going to eat from two until say maybe six o'clock or maybe seven o'clock. You eat for a five hour window. But for those first eight hours that you're up, you're fasting. That's a great time to get your workout in. That's actually going to burn fat and build muscle to work out on an empty stomach during the intermittent fasting period, which might be counterintuitive to what you've heard before. But that's called up to the ninth hour. That's the, the third way uh, other than 16 and 8 fasting. The next one is the one meal a day fasting. Okay, so that is pretty self-explanatory. It involves, you know, just one meal and fasting for the rest of the day. So it's a flexible form. You know, the single, the meal can be eaten at any time. It can be, you know, anything that you want when you can, you know, really load up on a way. But once again, you know, I don't think that that's a healthy way. I don't think that that you really want to establish those habits. I think that the fasting is really good, but I'm just picturing, you know, the size of the meal that people are going to get used to eating. And then it's going to be kind of like, you know, that's the reward for making it through the fasting is, oh my gosh, now I can gorge myself on all this food and overstuff ourselves on calories or on rich foods. You know, you, one of the things with intermittent fasting is it is absolutely going to be the most effective and it's only going to be effective when you're eating the right foods, okay? I can't stress that enough that you got to decrease your sugars. you got to eat a paleo-type 
ketogenic diet that we always talk about. Go back in the past episodes. Go back to the sugar episode. Go back to the fats episode. Go back even to the stress and the gut health workshops and the toxicity workshops. We talk about all these real foods that you have to be eating, and you talk about all the fake foods and the additives that you have to be avoiding. But once again, that's the one meal per day fasting, not not my my top recommendation uh, by any means. Uh, and number five is called nightly fasting, and that's kind of the opposite of up to the ninth hour. It's you know stopping your eating like five hours before you go to sleep. You know, so maybe you you eat at a really early dinner. You eat dinner at five o'clock, then you're fasting until you go to bed at ten. You wake up at seven, and you've been fasting for a long time. So there's a lot of ways to do this, and really there's no. There's no magic bullet to it, and there might be a way that works best for you or that works best for your schedule. I think that the 16 and 8 fasting rule is the best because what it does is it helps reset your body's cycles. It doesn't change your calorie intake. It, it doesn't have to. It doesn't change the foods that you're putting in your body. It just changes the timing, and it resets your body's cycles one of the biggest mechanisms of this is, you know, this is because, you know, your body stores sugar as what's called glycogen stores, okay? And that's easy, quick fuel that you can get out of your muscles and, and use it right away. Like if I'm standing here right now and all of a sudden this building catches on fire and I get to take off, my body's going to use my glycogen stores. But it stores those for about, it takes about six to eight hours for your body to metabolize those or break those down. And after that, you're going to start to shift into fat burning mode. But if you're if you're just keep feeding your glycogen stores, keep refueling, keep refueling, keep refueling, then you're never going to get to your fat stores. So you make it far more difficult to your body to use your fat stores as fuel. So we talked about in that last episode, you know, talking about the three biggest things that you can do for weight loss, it's all geared toward. It's not geared toward starving yourself, you know, you can lose weight quickly that way but you're going to die quicker. Uh, it's geared towards teaching your body how to burn fat and build muscle, burn fat. And so the first thing is, you know, we got to teach ourselves how to not be sugar burners. You got to go back and listen to that. But intermittent fasting is also going to help train your body to burn fat because you're going to burn up those glycogen stores and start going into your fat stores, okay? So along with helping your body burn fat, you know, improved weight loss, we'll go ahead and give that away as number one of the 10 benefits of intermittent fasting, improved weight loss. But what I want to change that one to actually is ideal weight because like I said you can read a lot about intermittent fasting for what's called hard gainers or people that have trouble gaining weight or that want to boost HGH in fact there was research presented at the the 2011 annual scientific sessions of the American College of Cardiology and it showed that fasting could trigger a 1,300% increase in human growth hormone in women and a 2,000% increase in men, okay? So HGH, that's commonly referred to as the fitness hormone, but it also, you know, maintains your health and also is huge for longevity and for slowing down the aging process. So it's not only going to improve your weight loss, but it's going to, I'm going to change that to be, you know, get you to an ideal weight. If you want to gain weight or you're trying to gain muscle mass, intermittent fasting is a very, very effective tool, no matter which direction you're trying to go, lose weight or gain weight. So that's number one, 10 benefits of intermittent fasting. Uh, number two is going to be detoxing. Uh, intermittent fasting is going to allow your body to detox because when you start, you give your body a break, okay? You give your body a break and it allows it to start dumping the toxic bucket and that actually allows your body to start stimulating detox and start working on some of these autonomic functions like digestion and detoxification. Okay, number three is it's going to reduce inflammation. And you know, studies have shown that fasting can help heal and relieve symptoms and decrease inflammation. You know, things like arthritis, dermatitis, atherosclerosis, so that's heart disease, ulcerative colitis, 
And what it's shown, you know, just on, on a blood index is, you know, reductions in leptin, which is your fat burning hormone, reductions in your free androgen index, the, your C reactive protein, your CRP. So, those of you who have had blood tests and you had high CRP, that's an inflammatory marker. Uh, your total and your LDL cholesterols, your triglycerides, raises your or lowers your triglycerides, lowers your blood pressure, in, and increases your sex hormone binding globulins. So it's doing all kinds of things with these inflammatory markers on your blood results, or on your blood results, I should say, uh, including CRP, which is one of the big ones, inflammatory markers. So number three is reduces inflammation. Uh, number four is improved digestive health, okay? And so your digestive system, you know, go back and listen to the gut health workshop if you want to learn more about your digestive system. It's incredibly, incredibly important. And you know, if you just think about it from a common sense perspective, the digestive system really has one job is let the good stuff in and keep the bad stuff out. And we're always bombarding our digestive system, and it never gets a break. And that's exactly what fasting does, is it gives your digestive system a break, okay? It gives it some time to rest and digest. It's another thing that like juicing does. That's why juice fasting is good because juicing gives your digestive system a break because the juice is separated from the fiber. Your digestive system doesn't have to break anything down. The juice just goes right into your bloodstream. But that's what fasting does, doing a, a full fast or intermittent fasting is going to improve your digestive health, number four. Number five, it's going to increase your sensitivity to glucose. It's going to increase your insulin sensitivity, and it's actually going to reduce your blood sugar levels overall. Okay, so it's going to increase your sensitivity to glucose. It's going to increase your sensitivity to leptin. It's going to decrease your ghrelin, or excuse me, increase your ghrelin, which is your uh, hunger hormone. So it's going to tell your body when you're full. But yeah, that's going to reduce your blood sugar levels and increase your insulin sensitivity, reducing your risk of diabetes, reducing your risk of you know further weight gain, uh, and allowing your body to start burning fat by getting those blood sugar levels down by that mechanism that we talked about with the glycogen stores. Number six is it's going to enhance your immunity. One of those reasons is because of, you know, number two, it eliminates toxins from your body, and that allows your immune system to function at its maximum. But it's also going to increase the amount of good bacteria by number four. Okay, so this is kind of like number two and number four. It's going to help your body detox. It's going to improve your gut health, and both of those are going to enhance your body's immune system. Okay, so a lot of the things we talk about, you know, building a bulletproof immune system, getting good gut health, reducing your stress, fighting adrenal fatigue, eating Eating a ketogenic healthy diet, all these things tie in together because they all do the same thing. They all help regulate your hormones and your body's functions and thus help correct the cause of underlying disease. But that's number six, it's going to boost your immune system. Number seven, it's also going to reduce your blood pressure. Research has shown that intermittent fasting lowers blood pressure and protects against damaging symptoms from heart disease and stroke. Okay, so it's going to decrease your blood pressure. One of the mechanisms by which is by reducing inflammation and that, that marker that we talked about, that CRP, that C-reactive protein, big marker for inflammation is usually elevated in people with high blood pressure and heart disease. Number eight, it's going to reduce your cravings. Okay, so there's research that shows that intermittent fasting will reduce your cravings to junk food. And the reason for that is the same mechanisms we've been talking about. It encourages your body to use its fat store. And as you be train your body to be a fat burner and not a sugar burner, your cravings go down. You can go back into past episodes like the sugar episode and listen to that where we talk about the fuel that you're feeding your body. When you're feeding your body, you know, fat as fuel, it's going to reduce cravings as well, but so is intermittent fasting because you're not just throwing sugar on the fire, you're not just throwing twigs on the fire, you're not just throwing you know, that small fuel on the fire over and over, you're throwing big logs on the fire and then you're just letting it burn. You're, that's what fasting is, is just letting it burn. So it's going to reduce your cravings for sugar and for junk food. Uh, number nine is it's going to actually cause you to have a healthier brain. It actually stimulates the release of ketones by your body 
burning fat. But one of the biggest things it's going to do is it actually boosts the production of something called BDNF. That's called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. That's a protein, and it's incredibly important for brain health. Helps fight against things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It actually helps activate brain stem cells, okay? And there's research that suggests that fasting every other day, uh, and, you know, on those fasting days, this is what the research showed is restricting your meal to about 600 calories on those fasting days. But that boosted BDNF, boosted brain-derived neurotropic factor, from anywhere from 50 to 400% depending on the brain region. So that's huge. That's number nine. You're going to have a healthier brain. That's incredible. And number 10, this is incredibly, incredibly important for all these things. They all tie together when it comes to metabolism, when it comes to hormones, when it comes to functional medicine, functional nutrition, it's going to help your adrenals. And one of the reasons it's going to do that, one of the ways it's going to do that especially the 16 and 8 fasting, in my opinion, especially that. You know, all the others from the mechanisms that we talked about, those mechanisms all will help adrenals, all will help your hormones regulate. But the way that the 16 and 8 is really going to help is it's going to help regulate your body's cycles, help regulate your body's rhythms. Implementing an eating plan like this with scheduled meals along with a scheduled sleep time, scheduled wake time, regulating the sleep cycle, regulating the eating cycle, regulates those hormones that function in a rhythm like cortisol, like melatonin, like testosterone and estrogen and all those hormones that aren't just random, aren't just boosted, you know, when you're feeling really macho. They all have a specific rhythm to them. And when that rhythm gets thrown off, it causes hormonal chaos. And so number 10 is it can actually help your adrenals and help fight adrenal fatigue by doing intermittent fasting. And now I want to make a little side note on that, that this is adrenal fatigue. There are three stages of adrenal fatigue. And stage number three, adrenal exhaustion, this can actually be harmful. Okay, so, but most people, most people are going to be in stage one or stage two. This can be tested, you know, through the saliva. We do the testing in the office. Uh, You know, we just found out this week for a patient that he's, you know, extremely adrenally insufficient. So he's in stage three. So intermittent fasting would not be a good protocol for him necessarily until he gets his adrenals just a little bit healthier or until he gets more of his blood sugar under control, then he can handle this. Then absolutely he can handle this. And not only can he handle it, but it's going to speed his results up. So that's number 10. It's going to help fight adrenal fatigue. But the cool thing about this intermittent fasting and the cool thing about talking about all these benefits is that, well, I hope that you're realizing and I hope that, you know, you're, you're, if this is your first time listening, that you go back and you listen to past episodes, you go to our YouTube channel, you, you know, you go to our blog, you start learning about this. And the cool thing that's just getting me really excited is how all of this stuff is intertwined. All of it works together. The body is an incredible, incredible mechanism, but it works with incredibly precise unison and rhythm. You know, it puts a, it puts a orchestra to shame. And the one thing that's controlling and conducting it all is the nervous system. And we never really talk about that, you know, especially when we're talking about weight loss or intermittent fasting, you know, very li- or nutrition, you know, top five foods for immune system, things like that, top five foods for detox. Uh, we miss and we forget about the conductor of it all, and that is the spine and the nervous system. So if you're not already, make sure that you see a chiropractor, make sure that you get adjusted. Uh, it is the most important thing. It is the missing piece in our healthcare today, in my opinion. But otherwise, try intermittent fasting. Give some of these protocols a try. Do a quick Google search. Send us an email if you have any more questions on it or if you want to know how to implement it yourself. But it's going to teach your body how to burn fat and build muscle and keep you at your healthiest and make sure that you can become the strongest version of yourself. So once again, this is Dr. Taylor Crick signing off with The Real Health Podcast. Make sure you check back in the archives and listen to past episodes while you're waiting for the new one to come out next week. I'll catch you guys then. Have a good week and maximize your lives. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. 
This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.